Hello, this is the Captain Paxo, welcoming you back to some Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. Playing gold this time! <laughs> I've, I managed to get from silver to gold! Look at that! And I am playing the, um, the scrubby, basic human engineer. At this point in my Mass Effect 3 career, on PC at least, I have completely renounced playing on bronze because uh, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin there are some not great players on bronze like there are players who have some insanely powerful gear yet they refuse to play anything more challenging than bronze because I don't know like the the equipment that they use is a complete crutch for their play style or their, their playing you know and, you know, you can play bronze and all that, and it's fine, but I just have to question why you're playing bronze and not something more difficult when you're using something like a Turian Ghost with the Surplus Harrier level 10. <laughs> I mean, that combo is competent even in Platinum. So I don't understand why you, you know, you're scrubbing it up in uh, bronze. And I, I got very, very frustrated with seeing these kinds of players who were using some incredibly powerful combos and just doing really poorly with it. The, the one that really set me off was someone playing the N7 Destroyer with, um, I think it was a Geth Plasma Rifle level 10 and a Geth Plasma SMG level 10. Both of those are decent weapons. The SMG is really good. The... Uh, Geth Plasma Rifle, not so much, but it's still competent, especially in bronze. But all he did was just sit in one place, camp it, not even in cover, he just stood there and then hip-fired everything to death. I'm just thinking, I, I need to play something a little bit more challenging, because this is really starting to irk me. So I started, well, not touching bronze at all, so I'm only playing silver, and this is a gameplay in gold. Which feels really good because I thought it would take me much longer to get a, uh, a gold gameplay than it actually did. So, the human engineer, the basic human engineer, not like the N7 or anything fancy like that, just basic human, out of the box starting character. They're actually a pretty powerful, they're a lot more powerful than I think a lot of people give them credit for. Um, especially the engineer because with that combat drone you can send that off in the middle of a group of enemies and distract them which is incredibly valuable for any character because it means less fire on you but it can also deal a decent amount of damage and if you set it up for doing shocks uh, you can stun a large group of enemies and get off some tech burst because it'll uh, set them up for like the disruptor and then you hit them with the overload and you'll get a, a nice little tech burst and with the way that I've set up my drone it doesn't have a lot of life but when it dies it explodes and deals a decent amount of damage so yeah good for just throwing out into a crowd distracting a few enemies dealing a little bit of damage setting up some tech bursts and whatnot um, and then the engineers other two abilities you know overload and incinerate they're both very competent abilities as well. I mean, Overload is incredibly powerful against shields, barriers, and synthetics, and Incinerate is really good against organic flesh and armor. So you really have something for every situation that you need. You know, throw out a drone, hit something with an Overload to get rid of their shields, and with this Atlas, I can hit start hitting it with some incin Incinerates like that. And both Overload and Incinerate are abilities that can both set up and set off combos. They can't set off their own combos, obviously, like, you, you can't just hit something with an incinerator and then a second incinerator and get a fire explosion. It doesn't work like that. If you set up something with an, um, for a fire explosion with incinerate, you need something else to detonate it. And I don't think Overload can detonate that. I think it's a little bit too weak of an impact ability to be able to do that. It can set off tech bursts, but tech bursts are generally pretty easy to set off. But I do believe that Incinerate can set off uh, Tag Burst. So if you hit something with an Overload and then an Incinerate, you'll get a uh, little bit of an extra burst of damage from a Tech Burst. You can see here I'm just I'm trying to stay kind of out of the, the crowd because these basic human characters do not have a lot of life. And what oh, you saw there, there was a, a bit of a fire explosion off that uh, Dragoon. So I did actually manage to get 
or set off a fire explosion with the overload. It just doesn't seem to be all that consistent. And I'm not too sure if that's because my, um, my, my recharge is too slow to be able to set off these explosions or if it's just inconsistent like that. I'm not entirely sure. But as I was saying, the these human characters are very fragile. They're not as fragile as something like a, a Drell or a Volus, but if you're used to something like a Juggernaut or anything that's remotely more tanky than this, you might have a hard time. You have to play very evasive, so I'll be poking out, dealing a little bit of damage, and then dodging back into cover. And just trying to stay aware of my surroundings, and if anything pops up as a threat, I need to take care of it quickly, like this nemesis. Get some overloads to get rid of the shields, and then incinerate to finish her off. And I finished off with a tech burst, so yeah, incinerate does set off those. And I'm surrounded by atlases, so I need to GTFO. <laughs> I roll into cover and it doesn't put me in cover. That's frustrating. But you see my drone doing, getting some shocks for me. Allowing to distract the Atlas or stun it at least for a long enough period of time to where I can get out of there. And it's also setting up for some tech bursts which I'm setting off and dealing not that much damage, <laughs> unfortunately. But I am dealing some damage. As I decide to run away, get some more space, hide behind some more cover, miss with an overload, god damn it, and get a little bit cheeky with the uh, corner trick. As my teammates come in, and start mopping up other enemies. Well, this guy's got a Riga Carbine. I think that's the um, the Juggernaut. Which normally when you see a Juggernaut, um, they're in it, the Juggernaut's an incredibly powerful character, but not everybody is amazing at playing it. A lot of people will end up putting up the Hex Shield in kind of awkward places and it will just stop all of your bullets. <laughs> Unless you've got punch through, which isn't, it's not like Warframe where punch through is kind of easy to get, especially on primaries, you know, you just put on shred, you get fire rate and punch through. No, it, it's, you only get two mods to put on uh, your weapons and, you know, a barrel to increase your damage is, I mean, why wouldn't you put that on? And then, you know, some weapons do not have good ammo economy, some weapons don't have good, um, what would you call it, uh, accuracy or stability. So you kind of need to compensate for that in some other way. As these Dragoons start getting really aggressive, and I'm getting shot by something, I'm not entirely sure what. And I get slapped by a Dragoon. God damn it. <laughs> this guy goes for a very aggressive revive. Although he did put up the Hex Shield in a pretty decent spot, actually. Block some line of fire to protect himself to uh, help me get up. This is me trying to hit that turret with an overload, but I'm not in a position where I can peek out of cover to be able to fire off an ability. So the game can kind of get a little bit weird like that as I start getting eaten up by the swarm. This is the hazard on uh, Firebase Glacier, by the way. It's this giant collector swarm that just goes around the map and starts chewing up everything, regardless of if it's a player or an enemy. <laughs> Which is really good when it like runs into a boss and just chews them up for breakfast, but it really sucks when it sits on an objective. <laughs> and you can't kill it, you can't get rid of it. If you shoot it, it just pisses it off and it starts chasing uh, players a little bit more aggressively. And I believe it has an increased AoE as well. I'm not entirely sure on that. All I know is stay away from it. <laughs> oh, dear. But the Juggernaut, right? Because it's an incredibly powerful character, it's a very easy character to use, most people don't perform particularly well with it because they don't have to. They don't place their Hex Shields in the best spots. They don't use their Surge Pulses as offensive abilities to set off explosions because you can do that, you know, it, it sets off every explosion as far as I'm aware but most people use it to increase their defenses because you can get a perk to increase your defenses but the juggernaut's so tanky anyway I'm not entirely sure if you need it and more dragoons getting extremely aggressive I hate the dragoons they got armor so th there's a lot of abilities that you can't use on them they just don't accept it um, because, you know, they're armored targets and some abilities are like, yeah, this will work if it if the enemy's not armored. What am I doing here? I'm about to get stabbed. Good God, never be that close to a phantom. You will die. <laughs> and it'll be very messy. <laughs> so the Dragoons have armor, which makes them just 
tanky in general, uh, prevents certain abilities from working on them as you would like to, them to work on, say like incapacitate with overload, doesn't work on armoured enemies. Um, they have a powerful gun, so they have a good ranged option, and they charge you down with a pretty powerful melee as well. It's got a lot of range and a lot of AoE, so just in general, the Dragoons are very powerful enemies and <laughs> can be very difficult to deal with when you got two of them in your face on a map like Firebase Glacier when it's quite difficult to run away. So that's the thing about this map. As much as it is really small, which means all of the spawns are condensed so you can kill a lot of enemies very quickly, it really forces you to fight for map control because if you don't and you have to retreat you will run directly into a group of enemies because there's nowhere to go where you won't run into a group of enemies it's just that small it's very frustrating I don't like this map um, at all but it's sure as shit a, a nice change from firebase reactor because I've been getting that so frequently this is bad so I'm going to try and do some ring around the rosy with the cover here. <laughs> Trying not to get shot by Nemesis. What's going on? I'm mess messing up the controls. Get aggressive on the Nemesis to try and take her out so I'm not, you know, having to deal with her and a Phantom. And I think the Juggernaut is just going to deal with the Phantom. Because that's one of the things that makes the Juggernaut extremely powerful is it can't get sink killed. It can't get grabbed. So Phantom? I don't give a shit. Banshee? I don't fucking give a shit. Come here. <laughs> And it's heavy melee drains enemies' health and it restores the Juggernaut's shields. So, incredibly powerful character. Whereas I'm playing, this, you know, this scrubby human engineer and just trying to get some damage out. As these fucking Phantom's hand cannons. This is another thing, very similar to the Dragoon. The Phantom has a really powerful ranged option as well as a lethal melee option. You know, that hand cannon deals so much goddamn damage, and they're very evasive. They have a cloak when you take up the barrier, and then if you get too close, they will stab you with their sword, and it will insta-kill you. And I don't I don't just mean, like, oh, it'll down you, and you have to get revived by a teammate. No, I mean it will instantly down you, and instantly bleed you out. It, referred as a sink kill or a grab, you know. You're just dead. <laughs> Why do people like fighting Cerberus as much as they do? I don't understand it. Me, I like fighting Geth, Collectors, and Reapers. I really hate fighting Cerberus. I think they're the most frustrating enemy to fight. And I know the Collectors are technically the hardest, because they just they have so much power and they're so tanky and they've got a, a lot of like AoE effects that they can send at you. But because I've fought them so much, and because they are just that difficult, I've had to get used to them, I've had to get better at them. But the Cerberus, eh, not so much. You know, when you set it to random or unknown unknown, like unknown enemy, you tend to get, like, collectors and... Well, you tend to get the other factions more often than you get Cerberus. And that's just, you know, rules of numbers and that. Because I'm running straight into a turret, that's not good. So I send out the drone to try and distract it. Because I noticed that the drone does a really good job of distracting the turrets. I'm running straight into a phantom. This is really bad. And I get slashed. Thankfully it didn't grab me because that would have really sucked. It just slashed me. So I can get up if I need to. But that was not a particularly good idea. I just wanted to run away from... You saw, like, I run run away from one phantom. And I just run into another group of enemies. And there's just nothing I can do. I've now put myself in a really bad situation. Where I'm trying to reposition from one group of enemies. Because I was getting swarmed. And now I've just put myself in an even worse situation. It's like, what do you do there? I don't have the crazy damage output or survivability. To be able to do this kind of nonsense. And here you see the, uh, the drone's doing a really good job at distracting enemies. Like the Guardians and those Tyrants. It gets them to turn around, takes the heat off of me, and then I can hit them with an overload in the back. Get a tech burst, get some good damage out there, and take them out. And something's shooting me right here, I'm not exactly sure what. Turrets! More turrets! And a fucking guardian! God damn. There's so many frustrating units to deal with with Cerberus. Like, it becomes very difficult to just have a straightforward confrontation with them. You have to work around so many of their characters, you know, with the com the combat engineers, you have to take them down before they put down a turret, because if they put down a turret, that, that gets very, very fucking frustrating. 
and I believe this is wave 10, wave 10 hack. This is going to get really messy. We're going to get phantoms and dragoons and atlases up the ass. Look at that, there's two fucking phantoms. I mean, this is gold, but still, Jesus. There's someone's fire explosion. Another, it's the other human uh, engineer. A phantom with a fucking hand cannon is absolutely wrecking me. Another phantom! And there you're seeing the power of the juggernaut blocking off a line of fire from one direction and then taking out the phantoms with the heavy melee. Really, really powerful character. And I honestly, if we didn't have this juggernaut, we would not have survived here. As the Hex Shield is doing something funny. I'm not too sure what's going on with that. And we've got an Atlas on the objective. Not quite as scary as a Phantom, but still dangerous. As a teammate uh, gets taken down by an Atlas, I guess he spawned in recently because it has just been the three of us uh, up until this point. I can't remember if he stays or not. One thing I do remember about this match is, uh, well, well, we'll see it in a bit. It's very frustrating, but quite funny. <laughs> so there we get the upload, we get the credits, and now it's just to try and take out the rest of the enemies without dying. <laughs> God, this is like an OG strat as well. Firebase Glacier against Cerberus, that's old school. That's like day one old school. When people first started playing this multiplayer seriously, like this, this was one of the go-to strats because, like I said, Glacier just condenses the spawns so harshly that it makes it very easy to get rid of a lot of enemies very quickly, especially if you start using missiles. There's a way in which you can manipulate the spawn so they, like, you get like three spawns in one closet, you missile that, it's an easy kill streak, and you get a million points. Well, maybe not a million points, but you get a shit ton of points. And there we go with the gold challenge and unknown enemy. So this was like, let's play fucking Glacier Hazard. And I'm like, I don't want to play Glacier Hazard. I hate Glacier. It's just, look at that spawn. Like, I was standing right there and that enemy spawned right next to me. That's not how spawns generally work. Like, generally if you're sitting right next to one of the spawns, it will prevent enemies from spawning there. They'll spawn on the other side of the map as I get taken down by Phantom's hand cannons. <laughs> Literal hand cannons. I almost got dicked right there. Public service announcement. Do not revive teammates when there is a grabbing enemy nearby. So something, an, if there's an enemy that can grab you and insta-kill you, do not revive your teammates next to you. Because if you're playing on gold, at least, there is a very high probability that the teammate you just revived will stand up and get instantly grabbed. That's how you dick someone over. It's not a good idea. Take care of the grabbing enemy and then revive them. But I think this is uh, where I make a bit of a mistake here. I'm all focused on this Atlas and these Phantoms. There's a Dragoon behind me. So I start focusing on him, hit him with an Incinerate. But, you know, he's pretty powerful. The Atlas is approaching, so I back up and I get stabbed. <laughs> God damn it. Oh... Fucking phantoms. Did you see how quick that was? Like, the phantoms are ridiculous. You just, you can't save people from getting stabbed by phantoms. The only thing you can do is stay the fuck away from them. But even then, they've got a really powerful ranged attack because fuck it, right? Ah, <laughs> oh, that would have been a full extraction as well. That's so frustrating. But yeah, I just backed up into an enemy spawn because... I would, even though I was really close to that spawn, I still just, you know, fuck it, right? <laughs> Enemy spawn there. So that's what I mean by Firebase Glacier. You, the spawns are so condensed and you'll just end up running from one fight into another. If you're curious as to what setup I was running with during that uh, game, here it is in full. The only thing that was different is that in the gameplay I was level 19 and in this loadout footage I'm level 20. So the only difference is that I didn't have my overload maxed out. But apart from that, everything was the exact same. And this is how my I have my human engineer set up. And it's how I'm intending to keep it set up for the most part. I might change my overload so it deals more damage to... Um, barriers and shields just so I can deal with that a little bit better. 
But anyway, that has been my first recorded video on gold. There will be many more of those, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.